In the beginning, our God created the world, a beautiful world, a world of abundance and serenity. And when our God felt loneliness, he populated his world with beings. He made each one in his image so that no one would feel oppressed in this world of boundless grassy plains, quiet rivers, and innumerable fruit-bearing trees. All beings lived in relative peace and harmony. For, understand, although only we, the Inalis, were granted the gift of intellect, all others were given, at the very least, a basic understanding of how a living being should act and behave under the watchful, caring gaze of a kind and merciful God. There was no need for strife or fear because no one lacked for anything. Even if someone lacked the willpower to stand and pluck a fruit, one could simply wait, sleep, and expect to wake up healthy and rested. Our God, in His infinite wisdom and care, deemed it necessary to fill the air we breathe with numerous nutrients and designed our primary star in such a way that life was always supported, no matter what. Of course, as you know, over time we became bored. We began to think and ponder. We looked at the skies and wondered what else was out there. We invented the wheel, writing, computers, and much more until we finally found ourselves soaring above our humble beginnings, our cradle planet. After millions of years of technological progress, we finally did it. We left the embrace of our God, that beautiful green and blue orb he created for us. We grew as a species, ready to search for others, willing to ponder and explore space with us. We set out in search of distant systems, landing on strange yet familiar worlds, undoubtedly created by gods as friendly as our own. And just when we began to think we were entirely alone, we found them. Aliens, beings that were so similar yet so different. Over time, wherever we looked, we found more and more, all born on paradisiacal worlds, specially created for the needs of their inhabitants, undoubtedly by responsible gods like our own. As our gods intended, we began to collaborate, building giant structures, exploring, and learning together, continuing to grow as if we were one big family. The Great Galactic Alliance, that's what we called ourselves. And for a while, everything went well. It seemed, with the rare exception of black holes or grotesque gas giants, reality itself was generally a warm and kind place where all intelligent beings could come together and enjoy life. That was, of course, until we found it. From ancient times, our most respected philosophers, scientists, and clerics theorized the existence of a world opposite to all others. A world inhabited by beings that indulge in every conceivable taboo, where life devours itself and is willing to do anything to ensure its continued existence. A world of chaos, filled with the coldest cold and the hottest heat. A world of unstable climate, changing topologies and terrible disasters, where the very way of life could change in the blink of an eye. Where nothing is guaranteed, and what wants to survive is forced to constantly adapt and overcome hardship. A world where only the strong survive, and are forced to transform according to the laws of this infernal place. I would not dare to imagine the horrifying monsters that could call such a place home. Undoubtedly, they would be twisted and perverted beyond mortal comprehension, their very existence engendering terror and madness in the minds of the especially innocent and weak-willed. Most of us assumed, or perhaps hoped, such a world could not exist. That it was just a scary but intriguing what-if scenario. We thought there could not be a divine being harboring such malice, apathy, and twisted sadism. We were wrong. When G.A. Grace arrived in the system we now call the Hell System, they thought they'd probably find a couple of gas giants in an inhabited world created by a kind, albeit lazy, god. Unfortunately for them, nothing could be further from the truth. We're not entirely sure what they saw, but it wasn't 12 hours after their arrival that they had activated all emergency systems several times and fled from there as fast as their hyperdrive would allow. After rescue, the crew underwent complete medical examination and psychological evaluation. Most of them were at best panicked, at worst nearly catatonic. Whatever was there shattered their minds and would undoubtedly pose a threat to the entire galactic community if not addressed quickly. And so, without further ado, a research fleet was tasked with investigating this strange cosmic anomaly. I think we all knew deep down what was about to be unveiled to the galaxy. We all just kind of prayed we were wrong. About eight months later, the research fleet returned and our worst fears were confirmed. There it was, floating on the screen, a blue orb of death and chaos. GA-14, a world of death, inhabited by terrible monsters and twisted abominations. It looked like a malignant tumor on the canvas of the universe. According to the bravest and smartest in the Alliance, this planet was infected with every nightmare ever conceived by intelligent beings, from giant carnivorous lizards to tiny microscopic viruses. Even some flora on this world had a penchant for death and destruction. There was no denying it, we had finally found it, a world created by a goddess of endless struggle and eternal suffering. 
While all other divine beings joined in goodness and light, she cast aside these weaknesses as she saw them and created a world of discord and destruction. Unfortunately, as we suspected, we couldn't keep it a secret for long. When the news finally reached the public, most sane individuals were, of course, shocked and appalled. But as is often the case, the youth uh, took a less traditional stance. Many claimed they were tired of the current state of affairs and were intrigued by this strange world of horrors and the beings living on it. This sentiment was confirmed and amplified by an abundance of fringe literature and amateur films spawned by this unholy curiosity. For some time, we attempted to pretend it did not exist, hoping it would simply vanish from the public consciousness. Alas, the longer we ignored it, the more its very existence tormented us. It seemed to mock us, taunt us, urging us to destroy it, and eventually, we succumbed. Initially, we tried to simply freeze the infernal world by obscuring the sun. We hypothesized that a prolonged ice age, combined with lowering sea levels, would eliminate most, if not all, beings, but somehow life persisted. Damn it, by the time we returned for a second attempt, this world was already repopulated with new horrors that seemed even more terrifying and daunting than the first. Therefore, since freezing did not work, we tried the opposite approach. We intensified the sun's rays and began to scorch the surface of GA-14. We dried up the major water bodies and prematurely triggered every volcano we could find. At first, we thought we had succeeded, that the universe was finally safe, but upon closer inspection, it turned out that a few stubborn little pests survived. No, not just survived, but thrived. Only during our third attempt did we realize we were making a colossal mistake. You see, by this point, we had had enough. We could almost hear this vile world and its malevolent goddess mocking us, as if they were playing with us. And so, with almost no other options left, we decided to employ certain forbidden sciences we had once sworn never to unleash upon the universe. I won't tire you with the details, but in short, we utilized technologies that should never have fallen into the hands of mere mortals. We interfered with their atmosphere, literally knocked the wind out of their lungs, poisoned every water body we could find, and for good measure, used kinetic nuclear bombs based on gravity to try and destabilize their world's core and tectonic plates, or at least even more than it already was. We watched relentlessly, methodically tearing this planet apart atom by atom, and as before, everything quickly began to perish. 65%, 85%, come on, come on, 90, so close, just a little more. 95%, 96%, yes, 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 95%, no, 90, 85%, no, this can't, 70%, what's happening? 60, how is this possible? 30%, and then it dawned on us. We had been blinded by our fears and ambitions. In our zeal to save the galaxy from the horrors of this world, we only played into the hands of this planet's evolution. Only now did we realize that with each doomed attempt, we were actually helping the surviving creatures adapt and evolve quickly. We had significantly accelerated what would otherwise have taken epochs. We were doomed from the start. The wretched goddess of this world had lured us into her trap and played us for fools, head to toe. At this point, many began to lose hope and abandon our noble cause. Some decided to simply break ranks and flee the system, while others sought refuge from the depressing reality we had created in the merciful embrace of madness. There were even a few brave fools, bless their souls, who directed their ships towards the planet, ignited their engines, and with a final prayer, hurled themselves at this world of nightmares and hatred in a last act of defiance against such immeasurable evil. These three plans, as well as what would eventually be called the victims of the foolish and reckless, unfolded over many generations, and many more generations later, a brilliant scientist, my ancestor, decided enough was enough. The great vizier Atlanio of the great theocracy of Inalis, with the help of the hype one more final time. This was, without a doubt, a genius plan, conceived with substantial help from divine inspiration. He theorized that there was only one way to truly destroy an entire world, by striking it with another world. Of course, as we all know, using a part of the great divine creation as a weapon is considered blasphemy of the highest order, so he chose something similar, so to speak, something adjacent to a world. And so, in our last attempt to eradicate this miserable plague, this disease of the galaxy, our ancestors hurled the largest asteroid they could find, endowed with divine energy, into the realm of the Dark Goddess. And just like that, it was done. We had finally won. Of course, there was no need to check if anything had survived. That would be ridiculous. For instead of facts that can be disproven, or inventions that break, we had, and will always have, something much more powerful. Faith. Faith in ourselves, faith in our gods, and faith that good will always triumph over evil.
and as we clung to faith and watched the surface of this now dead and desolate rock from the comfort of our home systems, we could finally determine once and for all that the universe was saved. Or at least so we thought, until one of the reconnaissance drones which GA Mercy had left behind suddenly began transmitting data back to its home system. Apparently something or rather, someone had initiated a first contact protocol. It must have been some twisted joke, it simply couldn't be true. As much as we wanted to believe it, the truth could not be denied. About 37 hours ago, the GAG G1439105 reconnaissance drone detected the presence of a primitive spaceship leaving the planet GA14, thematically named after the dark goddess who supposedly shaped and created this world. While our initial attempts to destroy these monsters led them to adapt to these cataclysms, it seems that our last failure led them to adapt not to our technologies, but to our minds. This damned world finally spawned beings that could rival our intellect and inventiveness, cunning, and deceit. And now, they had finally managed to escape the suffocating embrace of their goddess. Like a disease, they were finally able to spread among the stars, and soon they will reach us. May the gods help us.